Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Julian Miazza and today I've got my friend Tyler Bonebright, AMT3. Bonebright, that wasn't supposed to be a handshake, but. Oh. <laughs> but uh, today, uh, my buddy Tyler is gonna be talking to us about what it's like being an AMT3. Uh, he's stationed here in Clearwater. Uh, just got out of A school about a year ago or so. And uh, he's standing, uh, you're standing mid, er, nice. nights, nights now. So he's just going to talk to us about what it's like being an AMT on a fixed wing aircraft, not the Helos, fixed wing, and uh, tell us a little bit about that. So uh, you've been an AMT-3 uh, for a year now. How's, how's that process kind of been getting to, because before when you first became an AMT-3, you couldn't do the missions, you couldn't uh, be a part of really anything like that. Uh -huh. um, and now you actually can do your actual work. Uh, fixing the aircraft, stuff like that. Uh, kind of describe how that process has been uh, this past year. Well, at, at first when he got to the station, you know, he'd go through the regular, you know, orientation introduction stuff. He'd go through and meet everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, no offense like non-rates, but I kind of still felt like a non-rate when I first got there and, and up to like the six months, six month period, I still felt like I wasn't doing my actual job. I was, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of doing grunt work, fueling, fueling planes, uh, taxiing, washing aircraft. It kind of was grueling work at first, but uh, now that I'm actually on nights now doing actual maintenance. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm actually contributing to uh, what's going on and making mm -hmm. making the planes, you know, do what they're supposed to do. Is that? Um, kind of describe what it, what it's like working fixed wing as compared to uh, helos. Um, it is a better quality of life being on a plane because you know it's not it's 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 less less rugged because you know there's not much vibration being on your knees crouching and stuff being in the helicopter. Yes, they get more glory and kind of the hero aspect because they're saving people and mm -hmm. right there on scene in the water. But being on a plane, I feel is uh, more important because you're the one doing the initial search. There's a camera on the front of the plane and you're looking for the people in the water and you're the ones kicking out the rafts to, you know, boats that, you know, the helicopters can't get to if they're out far enough in the water. Describe uh, what, are, what are some of the things about your job that, that you can expect being on a fixed wing aircraft? Uh, well, the first thing you're going to do, obviously, is get uh, basic air crew qualified. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to be, you know, general knowledge about the systems in the aircraft and uh, the, the missions that it does. And that once you're qualified, you'll stand just, you know, BA checking systems and making sure, you know, everything is good while you're flying. And then once that, once you get qualified, then they'll be expecting to do your drop master syllabus. And that is the people that are pushing the, you know, search and rescue equipment out the back of the plane and, you know, mm -hmm. more of a, you know, just more doing more work on the plane for, for the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then S SSO, which is the sensor system operator, they are the ones who work with the camera on the aircraft on the front. And it's like this computer kind of video game looking thing in the, that sits in the, in the plane and uh, joystick and ca uh, camera systems. I mean, it's pretty fun to play with, actually. So, what's what's the the schedule of of a fixed wing AMT kind of like? Like day to day. Yeah, day to day. Um, we got three shifts. We got days, uh, nights, and mids. The day guys do, you know, most of the flying and the, the SAR and uh, you know, light maintenance. You know preventative maintenance I would say then the nights crew is the heavy maintenance and they don't focus on flying but just you know maintaining the planes making sure they're up you know good and safe um, and they uh, they don't they don't stand duty which is nice and then mids uh, comes in and they do uh, just corrosion pretty much washing the planes and uh, lubing them up grease so during the day, you're 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 more mission oriented. Mm -hmm. You're going out. You're doing the the, cer the searches, 
uh, they're not doing rescues with the, with the fixed wings, correct? Uh, I wouldn't say rescues like the helicopters do, but yeah, they do, uh, if, if they need, if no one's like hurt or need to be evacuated, uh, and there's just a mm -hmm. boat in the water, they'll kick out a raft and uh, you can consider it a rescue. How, I don't think maybe a lot of people know when they're joining the Coast Guard, they think of AMTs and they just think of the guys that are, you know, fixing the, the helos and, you know, lowering, lowering the basket and the rescue swimmer. What, um, did you know that you could be a, a fixed wing AMT before you joined the Coast Guard? And did you know that was something that you wanted to do? Um, at first I was inspired, you know, to buy what everyone thinks is the, the the winch, mm -hmm. the guy on the winch, he's hoisting the basket. I didn't, uh, I knew there were planes. I didn't think much about it because, you know, everyone wants to be the hero. But once I did take a tour of an air station once and got to see both sides, I saw that the, um, the planes is where I wanted to be at just because, uh, you know, it's more, I don't know how to put it, but yeah, it's planes is, uh, it's kind of a different lifestyle compared yes. to the, the fixed wing. How, yeah. how would you kind of describe the, the two different sides of uh, fixed wing and, and uh, helos? The helo guys are uh, very, very, you know, they're, it's a fast oriented, fast paced lifestyle versus the C-130 sides, a little, little slower. You get uh, obviously more time to get a plane out and, you know, get her way and go out and fly whereas the the 60 guys they're they have a 30 minute ramp time and they need to get up and go mm -hmm. they uh their maintenance is a lot more uh, scrutinizing versus ours a lot it's a little more relaxed versus the helicopters just because they're uh they're kind of where the coast guard is focusing mm -hmm. their attention all the time yeah so c-130s don't get as much recognition as they do just because the attention is on them but uh, it's still a very rewarding job. How, how is uh, your your unit and the fixed wings? How, how have they been contributing to like uh, the hurricanes that just happened with Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria? That's actually where we come in and take the spotlight. We uh, we're the ones that are flying the uh, the supplies out there and, and and doing evacs. We we land and, and take in refugees. Uh, we have three flights a day you know, delivering supplies with them, with them coming back with uh, people, you know, coasties and, mm -hmm. you know, locals. Uh, the helos obviously can't fly out to Puerto Rico, so that's why they need us. And uh, so they, they bring back uh, people who just lost their homes or something like that and lots of supplies, so. And have you, have you been a part of any of those missions where you're covering people, dropping, dropping equipment, anything like that? I have not gotten the opportunity, uh, but I'm sure, you know, someday I'll be able to have, have that experience. And that's just because you're on, you're on nights. Mm -hmm. If you're on days, you'd be going out oh, yeah. in a single day, flying out to these different locations and doing stuff like that. Yes. How, how much would you say that the Coast Guard, that the, the fixed wings have been playing a part in these, these hurricanes that have had, you know, been pretty, pretty hectic this past month? Uh, you know, a big part, like I said, they're, they're doing, you know, a lot more work than any other branches can, you know. Got a lot of recognition from the president, you know, just everyone's very thankful that, you know, we're, we're able to get there and, you know, in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. And this Clearwater is pretty much the only station that's been doing the main part of the work. Elizabeth City actually has sent down some planes. In, a, in order to assist, but yeah, the last three hurricanes—it's crazy. But how many how many air stations are actually four fixed wings in the Coast Guard? Uh, there are only four because their range is so long. So there is a C-130 unit here in Clearwater, Kodiak, Alaska, Barbers Point, Hawaii, and uh, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. So they have a very long distance. So. So you're, don't you're, need as many stations you're, you're really vital to uh, this area that, that deals with a lot of hurricanes because you know you, you can easily go to Texas, you can easily go to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and you're the only C-130 that really can do that, yep. correct? And Elizabeth City, like I said, has been able to assist us. They, brought, they flew down two planes, 
just because we have three flights a day and so many so many duty crews you know they get they get worn out eight hour flights so uh wow. elizabeth city has been able to help help pick up the slack wow so you're you, you're going to spend your whole career kind of jumping from uh these these four different c-130 locations you said mm -hmm. barbers point hawaii kodiak alaska um elizabeth city north carolina and then clearwater florida yep and so if if you're going to be fixed wing your whole career, you're just going to rotate between those. Yeah. 